And we are continuing. Yeah, that's right. To help you make your decisions on the ballot. We're doing our candidate interviews. Um, I think Jackson, by the way, Jackson, good morning. Good work. How are you, sir? Good morning. How are you? Excellent. Is our project uh, under control? Yes. All right. Very good. He's, Jackson's amazing. It's his handiwork that helped line up our right. full schedule of, I think, every race and uh, and every participant now in the general election. And, and that includes Mr. Nolan Wentz. That's right. Yakima County Sheriff Candidate Nolan Wentz. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Nolan. Thanks for being here. Well, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Um, and you know, in this day and age, you got to add this, too. Thank you for stepping up into the arena of politics, because uh, that's... Um, probably more scary now than it's ever been, given what <laughs> seems to pass for, you know, okay behavior out there in the world. You guys have been doing pretty good, but just politics in general is uh, is a nasty biz now. So thanks. Uh, happy to be here after uh, kind of a, you know, close primary race there, right? It was. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel? I think we're doing fairly well. Good. Yeah. I can have. To, I have to tell you, I have explored areas of my. Uh, uh, comfort zone I didn't know I had. Uh, this has been a very big learning experience. Yeah, I bet, I bet. Well, if people don't know Nolan Wentz, who, who is Nolan Wentz? Kind of in a nutshell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I have 36 years of law enforcement <laughs> experience myself. I'm second generation law enforcement after my father, uh, who began in 1963. So basically somebody in my family has been in law enforcement in the Yakima <laughs> area for the last 55 years. Right. Uh, I have four the years. The Wences are watching. That's kind of what people have always said. That's right. The Wences are out there somewhere. <laughs> Pretty much. We've been around for a while. Uh, I have four years as a uh, law enforcement specialist in the Air Force, six years with the Yakima County Sheriff's Office as a patrol deputy and a detective, and then 26 years with the Yakima Police Department where I was both de uh, patrolman, uh, detective, sergeant, and lieutenant. And the last 11 and a half years was a lieutenant. Well, after all that, why do you want to become the next Yakima County Sheriff? I have looked and saw that there's a need, and I think that it's a, it's a need that requires somebody from outside a little mm -hmm. bit who can look at things with eyes wide open and maybe see things from a little bit different perspective. What do you think are the biggest challenges that are facing the county these days? Well, a lot of the challenges, there, there's a couple things that I think primarily in, in the crime area, uh, we've got all of the thefts and everything going on down in the valley. Uh, the farmers getting hit very hard. I think a good deal of it has to do with uh, the gangs who have decided that they're no longer interested in trying to tag up all your property. Uh, they're being their shot callers are in prison, and they're the ones that are looking to, mm. I guess, gain more power in the in the valley. They're interested in the drug trade, anything else they can get in stolen property, uh, human trafficking, for that matter. Uh, and they're interested in the money now. They're not interested in just trying to bolster their numbers. They're they're looking at making this an ongoing enterprise, and that's going to require a uh, approach with everyone, all of the agencies working together, including the federal agencies, federal authorities. Do, do we think, Nolan, that we need to do anything legislatively to curb the ability to mm. run organizations from prison in terms of the kind of communications there can be or are we into civil liberties there and we're, we're getting into the way of people's rights to, to talk and all of well, that? Well, you, you are looking at civil liberties and that is something that you need to consider whenever you're doing anything. I don't want to, to try and in, infringe on anyone's rights, including people that are in prison, but they need to understand that these people, they're not just coming out and sending things uh, written documents or whatever, They're, they are very smart. They learn how to do things by code. Sure. Uh, and I guess it, it comes down to making certain that everybody is aware of what they are doing, and we are evaluating what they are doing so that we can intercept what's going on and, and try to track these people and maybe call into uh, what's already on the books as far as RICO statutes, uh, conspiracies, uh, charges where we are able to go after everybody as a group and, and you are able to do things federally and they don't like the federal system and that's already been explored uh, and it's being done now but uh, I think it probably will be something that can be expanded in the future. Do we need more deputies out there and if so how do we fund those deputies? We do need more deputies out there. Uh, they are starting right now and there are, have been a couple hired. I think there's in two in the academy right now. Uh, 
I mean, do, do you think we can ever really have enough deputies to cover the vast amount of, of space that that the county sheriff's office has to well, you've got has to has to fill and have to find and has to help people? I guess you're running across the entire county, right? In some some cases, uh, because of your well, the lack county's of deputies. The county is mm-hmm. huge. It's yeah. almost forty three hundred. Well, it's forty two nine eighty square miles. Uh, that's gigantic. I mean, is, you, is it your plan to, to increase the amount of deputies? It is. I want to make certain that we have enough to be able to satisfy the requirements and the need from the community to have people be able to respond in a reasonable amount of time. Now, that's being done best that can be done now by uh, working in cooperation with other agencies that are close by, but that's not something you're always going to be able to count on, um, and especially when you're, you're right. looking at areas like well, say, for example, Wapato, that's kind of fallen apart. Uh, they've got, what, two guys that are there now? Right. Yeah, There's right. no way to be able to recover that. So the sheriff's office needs to be able to respond to help them. Uh, I certainly would not want an officer responding to something and putting themselves in harm's way because we didn't have somebody able to go. Uh, so, I mean, it, you're going to run into situations like that. Uh, Mabton is another town that uh, no longer has a de- uh, department. And they need to be able to have that coverage as well. Uh, I know that the sheriff's office has contracted with a number of cities, I mean, Natchez, Hera, uh, for years to provide service. And it looks like that's going to be expanding. So trying to maintain all of this coverage with what we have now is just not reasonable. I, I ask you that. Because I guess you could say if you increase deputies, that would be somewhat of a change in the office that you, that you would make. Uh, but there are some other, there, and, and I, I'm referring to your your Facebook page, there are some other things that you won't do. That There's some rumors out there, right? Let's clear up some rumors here. Uh, that uh, the, the, Of the things that, that I guess that people are saying that you, will, you would do if you got into office. <laughs> then there have been some rumors, and, yeah. and a lot of it had to do with dismantling some of the uh, uh, volunteer programs. Right, the reserve as, officer program, right? Such as the reserves, and, and, and that's just silly. Uh, I have my degree in business, and business practices, you do not go into an agency and turn things on your ear, on their ear by trying to change things around. That's just ridiculous. Uh, it, you go in, you evaluate what's going on, and if there are changes to be made, those changes oftentimes come from the people that are within, and you consider what their experience and expertise is in order to make those things. Um, generally, I have seen in my past experience has been that good quality changes, if they are needed, come from the people that are already doing the job, and you need to be able to consider what it is that they are doing and take their their knowledge into account every time. Right on. Uh, the other the other rumor that you want to clear up is the, about the that you'll be double dipping by collecting your retirement pension and the salary for sheriff. Uh, I think there's some people out there that probably wouldn't mind that, given the work that you did for all those years. But but some people do, uh, and and so address the double dipping rumor. Well, we are right now. I I have my retirement through the Left Two system, and that's law enforcement and firefighters uh, retirement system through the Washington State. Uh, because the sheriff's office is a uh, commissioned officer again, uh, you end up losing your, well, you don't lose it, but your, your retirement is suspended. Right. Uh, so you do not collect it anymore, and you go back into the system, so you're once again contributing to the fund. The benefit that I do get is uh, each year I am a law enforcement officer as sheriff, I would get to add another 2% to my uh, ending retirement when I retire again, uh, but I do not get to collect both. Right on. Okay. Well, I'm glad we're, that we Which, were able to clean. To be it. honest with you, I, I've heard this argument time and time again, I and I hate it. Yeah, I, I hate it. You you work the time you earned yeah. it. It's like going and getting another yeah. job after you finished your career. <laughs> we see that you know military people retire, they earn their pension, they put in the hours, they got what they've got because they put in the time. Now you want to go get another job? So what? Yeah. Uh, go back and work as a consultant for well, the military, whatever, as well, you I know. Got, so, I mean, I just, that, that has always irked me. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, and like I said, I mean, I think a lot of people, given the fact that he was an officer all those years, you know, and earned it through that kind of work, my goodness, it even makes it that much stronger. We've got a couple of minutes left. Uh, Nolan, tell us why people should vote for you and not your opponent. Why, why should you be the next Yakima County Sheriff? Well, I think I have a 
tremendous amount of experience, not only doing the job uh, as patrolman and detective. Uh, I don't know if anyone is aware of all of the uh, cases that I have done, but I have dedicated myself to making certain everything is done fair, thorough, with a high level of integrity and building a reputation of uh, honesty with everyone I've worked with all the way through the valley, especially prosecutors, the judges, defense attorneys. Uh, it's been important to me to, to build that my entire career, and I've, I've worked hard to make certain I've managed that all the way through. Uh, it's important to me to have that, a high level of integrity. I also have never been one to sit back and wait for somebody to give me something to do, to, to teach me something new. Uh, early on as a, de as a deputy, I taught myself how to write search warrants. I couldn't find anyone that knew how to do that. So I went out and found that, and then I ended up teaching that to uh, the detectives when I got to detectives, and then again to detectives when I returned to at the Yakima Police Department. Uh, what I started has expanded considerably, uh, but uh, that is that actually began with me. Uh, not satisfied with what was going on, I did manage to go back to school when YVC operated or uh, offered this. Uh, bachelor program in business. Uh, that's something I began in 1979. I don't mind telling you that school now is uh, considerably more expensive than it was in 1979, but I managed to get <laughs> my, right. I finished my degree. So you're on the 20 plus year plan like some of us were, yeah, right? That's right? Actually, yeah, I was about 35 years. 35 years, <laughs> all right. I don't recommend doing it that way. Uh, but I did get it done and I enjoyed uh, accomplishing that goal. Uh, and I've always wanted to try and improve myself so that I can, you know, keep moving forward. And that's something I think that is important to bring to the sheriff's office. There's always places that can be changed. Always, and, and change is the only standard. Uh, you, it will always be something that's going to happen whether you want it to or not. You need to embrace it and make the best of it every time you can. The sheriff's office, I think, is ready for some changes. And I believe I'm the person to be able to do that. Your uh, your website? Yes. Tell us what it is. The, the Your website, where can we find it? Is it wentzforsheriff.com? Oh, it is. Right, and right. then the Facebook. Okay. I think there's more stuff on the Facebook. Yeah. Um, and we're going to continue putting more things on there as we go along. Excellent. Uh, right up until voting. Right on. Nolan Wentz for Yakima County Sheriff. Thanks for coming in this morning. Well, thank you very much. We wish you luck on your uh, on your uh, your campaign, and if you win, we definitely will have you back in here. Well, I appreciate it, and I will be. Okay, thank you, Dolan.